U.S. Census Bureau. That's the story that we're going to be talking about today. Census takes House seats from Dem states, gives to GOP. So CNN calls it gerrymandering. And I'm calling this video, MSM accuses Census Bureau of gerrymandering after Dems lose and GOP gains. And this is uh, a topic report. Census results, congressional seats is the title of the topic report. How clever of me. CNN, not happy with census results, calls it GOP gerrymandering. So this is from newsbusters.org. Census targeting states Biden won GOP gains by gerrymandering. This Nick, Nick is Fa Nicholas Fondacaro gives us our excerpt with an on-screen headline that dubiously re read, Census shifts three House seats from states Biden won. Frito, that's who they're calling Chris Cuomo, which, you know, I, I say with newsbusters, I would really, I would, I would, I would down, dial down the polemics. You don't need the polemics. It kind of undermines you. If you're going to be a newsbuster, try to be a little bit, I don't know, a little bit less polemic-y. So, but you do you, boo. Frito came back from a commercial break projecting a suspicious tone. Did you hear about the Census Bureau and what the census is going to do? It's going to shift some of the seats this Congress. It's going to make a difference, especially for the left. The House is about to get real skinny, real fast, he warned his viewers. Flaunting his meager grasp of the subject matter, Fredo, Chris Cuomo, he does not like being called Fredo. There's a video of him willing to attack one of we the poors because they dared call him Fredo. Just don't call these millionaires billionaires poors. Or, or Fredos, or don't don't speak, don't 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 even dare speak against them. That's kind of the vibe you get from that video. So Chris Cuomo, aka Fredo, according to Newsbusters, that's the way they're phrasing it, began suggesting the Census Bureau was taking away blue states from President Biden and the Democrats. Of course, as you know, the Census Bureau uses its data to decide how many seats in each each state gets in the House of Representatives and their electors for the Electoral College. Biden, Democrat states or the states that he won, they're going to lose three states. Given that Democrats only have a six-vote majority in the House, three states, three seats could matter, right? So then we get more headlines here. Early census results show Michigan losing congressional clout. That's for Michigan Radio. Alabamans, Alabamians' strong census response led to retention of all congressional districts. That's from ALReporter.com. Census barely leads to a congressional loss for New York from New York Times. Indiana will keep nine congressional seats. That's from IndyStar.com. And uh, they were hoping to gain a seat, but they didn't. And Illinois loses congressional seats as 2020 data, census data released from Embassy Chicago. Census shocker! No new congressional seats for Arizona, 12news.com. And uh, finally, from redstate.com, we have the reapportionment of congressional seats promises some surprises in the future. And I will say that uh, Chris Cuomo would be... I'll just say that uh, it's possible. It's, it's not as possible. You're... Generally speaking, the Republicans, they rest their vehicle of power on the Bill of Rights, on the ideational power of the Bill of Rights. Not that they consistently follow it, because they don't. Well, I, I would argue that they don't. But, so, uh, Bill of Rights, rule of law, these are the type of ideational power, vehicles of power that they rely on, for a variety of reasons, which I'll we'll get into now. So I don't believe that as many of them would be as as ready to believe the gerrymandering mythos when things don't go their way with the census. But I would believe that that most of them would maybe not 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 as as significant a majority percentage as amongst the DNC who do not have as their their vehicle of power is not rule of law. Essentially, the vehicle of power of the DNC is essentially priest kingism. And that is, is the idea of a certain group of elites having special knowledge, kind of a Gnostic, Gnostic politicism is what it is. Special knowledge that uh, we, the poors, the plebeians, the uneducated, the un, un, the non-experts don't have access to. So they they rule through the personality and charisma of individuals, whereas the Republicans ostensibly seek to have our rule be set by standards outside of individual humans, ostensibly. 
Not that they consistently do that. And I can think of a case in point, even on our Freedomist page, where someone was commenting about, we had posted a uh, video regarding this shooting of this, I uh, can't remember his first name right now, his last name is Brown, in which it seems more and more that the shooting is pretty unjustified. And then somebody put a link on there and said, well, look, but Fox News is reporting that he has this uh, drug drug dealer rap sheet and multiple arrests, whatever. And uh, that, that, that somehow should let you look at a situation and diminish the expectation of rule of law being applied. We've been talking, we outside of the DNC have been talking about the standard of, of of free speech, which is the most offensive of us need the most protections because if the most offensive isn't protected, in the end, none of us will be protected. King Bill will lose his authority. And so in this case, King, I, I, I overwhelmingly I see conservatives more than willing to believe because somebody has a checkered past that we should just dismiss this. And I understand that DNC uses these things as weapons of war to divide Americans, to divide the poor so they can convince them to surrender their liberties. But if you want to be consistent when it comes to the Bill of Rights, then you need to be consistent. And that means the, the most offensive of us need the most protections. Because if the most offensive of us, the, the serial criminal, if the serial criminal was, was complying and then still got killed, we should seek justice for that individual because we're really seeking justice for ourselves. And I think I'll end that here on that note. <laughs>